<laughs> so I'm Doug, this is Andy. Uh, we are Antune Farm. Um, and glad to be here, glad to meet all of you. Um, we're just gonna go over what's gonna happen this morning so you guys can be prepared. Uh, but also, we're not doing this for uh, entertainment or camaraderie reasons alone. That happens, absolutely. Uh, but we also want everybody to know what is gonna happen and why and how. Because if it's not educational, I'm not sure why we're doing it. Today we're going to humanely kill a pig and then we're going to harvest the blood and the organs from that pig to be used for food. Tomorrow we're gonna butcher it. And then uh, on Monday, uh, on day three, we're going to do all final processing and value adding some of the organ meat. Uh, we'll teach you how to do curing, how to make bacon. You can pour food on the ground or in tubs, but if you've ever seen pigs eat, it's not a, it's not, it's not stasis. They're not holding still, right? They're moving around like crazy and that makes your shot even harder. I'm gonna go down to about here, and I'm gonna stop. And then I'm gonna make kind of like a diamond shape around the pizzle. This is kind of an arbitrary amount of space, but I happen to know that on the other side of the skin is gonna be fat, under the fat is gonna be meat, or under the meat is gonna be more fat, and then a connective layer. That's what I'm looking for is a connective layer. So I'm gonna pull this out of the way, and go down through so there's the fat, there's the meat, there's the connective layer on the other side of the fat, and that's what I'm looking for. Once I get to that, I do the same thing on the other side. And then I come up under it. A good sharp knife is really good for eviscerating because I don't ever want to be applying pressure. I want the knife to do all the work with just like a touch. Okay, so once I'm under the pizzle, like I am here, I then just simply come back here, and you'll see the ureter present itself almost immediately. Yep. Like as soon as I cut fat, the ureter's like, bam, here I am. Now I'd almost have to want to cut into that ureter. I don't really need to be careful. It is super, super tough to cut through. So I'm not really concerned about it. So what I wanna do is just cut alongside it and then get behind it. So I scoop the insides out. Then I roll the sleeves. <laughs> so, at this point, I need to find Andy's good work on the back end. And I do that by taking my hand and kind of make, make a cupping. It's good to have trimmed fingernails. But it, a cupping motion, I'm actually working my way up through the pelvic canal. So the pelvis is up here. I'll open it up a little bit. Yeah. Whoa. Dude. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. That feels. <laughs> when you're like, telling me. You should keep that and bring it inside and let them good. feel it. You could probably make it. <laughs> Jessica would be fascinated. It by just how that wouldn't feels. have any nutrition. That's yeah. all. That's Jackson, do you hear that? Go get the women. Go get the women, <laughs> folks. <laughs> yep. Yep. Andrea, are you picking a side? This is so cool. Side of right down the middle. Down the middle. Oh, that's the goal. Okay. Right down the middle. Okay. Okay. Now go touch it. It, it feels like styrofoam. I'm serious. It feels like styrofoam. That is insane. Oh, that is Isn't that weird. crazy. Isn't that weird? Uh, <laughs> it's like wiping yeah. it off on your yeah. towel. On my clean towel. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything comparable to that for uh -huh. body? Yep. And it's like uh, deer, they all have that. Any oh. mammals have okay. something somewhat ball. analogous to it. Creator, you're a young man. <laughs> this is you're not going to run out of energy. <laughs> but if you're an old guy, <laughs> it makes sense to use your best muscles, and that does not include crouching. So if you're always doing this up here, you're using all your best muscles. It's when you're doing this number that it's like really compromised. 
So what we're gonna continually do is try to back the tractor up so we're always at this angle. We're always cutting above ourselves using our chest, our arms, our back. Oh, he's bringing it down. Oh. That's free, which I don't always do, but... Um, You're not worried about the intestines leaking? No, not at this point. Why not? Uh, because right up here, when it leaves the, the stomach, it goes into part of the intestine called the duodenum. Uh -huh. And it, there is like some leakage, but it's not going to spew out. Okay. Uh, the small intestine that has had the mesentery pulled off. That's the awesome. Mesentery. The mesentery. Hand knot. And cinch it and keep it tight. Real tight? Yep. Okay. So the idea is I'm going to blow this up. It's good. And when I'm when I think I've blown it up uh, enough, yeah. I'm going to pull this out, okay. and you're going to cinch it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so it's important to see where the hole is in the head. Okay, uh, hold that side. It was an okay shot, a perfect shot. I mean, a perfect shot. Yeah, would have been right there. And in Italy, the and there was and they had the fresh uh, organ meat. They would hang a fresh bladder outside of the butcher shop, so everyone knew they had a fresh here. kill. And that's when I you go get your livers better. and kidneys and all that stuff because you want that fresh. Hams, those things are cured, but they're not dried to a point where you eat them raw. Okay. Okay, so is that a difference from prosciutto versus bacon? And what yeah. comes from the ham, though, right? Yeah, that's the difference between honey baked ham and prosciutto. That might be one of those bumpy, sometimes they're bumpy. It might be okay. But otherwise, those are really clean. It looks great. Wild stuff, man. Okay, so with this, we can probably scrape right in here. Stop, when I get the bone, and then get the soil. We'll do this a couple times throughout the weekend during butchery. But I already know there's already gonna be some meat up here. Not a ton, but enough that it's worth using my knife for. Now, depending on the head uh, and the depth of it, you're only going to be able to go so far this way, and then you're going to have to stand the saw up because it will bottom out on the saw itself. You like it? It doesn't taste bad. <laughs> it's really, kind of weird. It's a little weird texturally. Yeah. And it's like this idea is right here. And I'm like, this is organ. Yeah. But I'm eating it. I'm like, it's not bad though. Yeah. I'm okay with it. But I'm processing the thought of this is organ while I eat it. And it doesn't taste bad at all. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a mental thing that goes into I think if you could, you know, if this could become normal. Yeah. You could be like, oh, we're seeing organs. It's no big deal. But like, you just gotta yeah. get over it. Well, and intentionally, it is all basically the same size. Of so when you take a bite, you don't know if you're getting heart or kidney or spleen or liver. It's all mixed up. I did sit and watch Mark and Scotty. Yeah. And that's there. Yeah, and if you're real, if you're real, like intentional, you can, as you're chewing, you can pick out, like, okay, this is different than this. How is that? And it's coming back. Better than I thought. <laughs> Are you okay, do we know what's all in here? Kidney, heart, spleen, spleen, liver. It's got the liver texture. It's good. Is it the French? The crunchy toast. The crunchy toast bounces out the texture of the. Would you say he has? 